today we're talking about Iraq, a country that's currently having a going out of business sale. All the oil must go. It turns out that there was a cheaper way for countries to get a good deal on oil than invading and rebuilding the government. Just ask China. So why does this government today find themselves between a rock and a hard place? Well, First, the problem. Iraq's exports are about as diverse as a 90s sitcom. The product they went all in on, oil, has gone bust since the pandemic began. Lockdowns not ideal for oil demand. Now, This is such a large problem today because Iraq's oil industry is nationalized, so if that revenue goes belly up, the entire state's finances go belly up along with it. Think of the Iraqi government as more oil company and less taxing and spending entity. This oil company is going bankrupt. Now, it's never good when your national budget has to include the caveat that this is all only achievable if oil doesn't go below a certain price. So this puts Iraq in a bit of a pickle. What do you do when you have to keep paying for things but the revenue just isn't there? We're not talking about debates like should we give each citizen $600 or $2,000? Think more urgent. Should we pay people who work for the government salaries this month? They're running out of cash to pay federal employees and basic bills required to continue to operate a government. It's so bad that Iran just cut off their gas over unpaid bills. Let's hope the people don't give this government an eviction notice. So now it sounds like a good time for some good old fashioned deficit spending, right? In America, when we debate deficit spending, it's just assumed that yeah, the money is on the table if we decide to take it. Unfortunately for countries like Iraq, in order to borrow money, you need someone who's willing to lend it to you. Investors are in short supply for financing a small country that's on the brink of not being able to make payments on their current debt load and bills. So with loans in short supply, what's left? Well, you can either sell a ton more oil, start devaluing your cash, or make budget cuts. And luckily for this episode, Iraq chose D, all of the above. First, the oil sales. Iraq has one huge problem facing their goal of selling more oil. They just signed a deal with OPEC saying that they can't increase oil sales. Not off to a great start with this first prong. So how do you sell more oil while staying in compliance with OPEC's restrictions? Look towards the future. And I don't mean planning ahead, I mean selling future oil shipments for a discount now. Basically, hey America, shot in the dark. I'm guessing you're not going to be fully renewable by next year. I'll give you a 10% discount if you pay for next year's oil shipments right now. Iraq is seeking an upfront payment of about $2 billion in exchange for long term crude supply contracts. And good news for Iraq, they're seeking paid off when they found a buyer. China is now the proud owner of one year of discounted Iraqi oil. Congratulations. So that $2 billion places a nice mattress at the bottom of Iraq's 20 story fall. But that's still death height. Their next strategy for getting cash is a bit more painful. Iraq is intentionally devaluing their currency by 20%. Now this feeds into an innovative new way of paying government employees significantly less without docking their pay at all. What little cash the government of Iraq has left exists in foreign currency reserve accounts, meaning it's currently in the form of American dollars, not Iraqi dinar. At the same time, they pay local contracts and federal employees using the Iraqi dinar and not US dollars. So let's take a step back. Imagine you're a company doing business in dollars, but you pay your employees using credits you create and control. Corporate policy says a dollar is equivalent to a credit. Good. Oh, it's payday, so I'm going to swing by the bank and exchange $20 for 20 credits. Then here you go, 20 credits with your name on them. Ooh, it's been a rough quarter. We changed the exchange rate. Now $1 buys two of your credits. 
I'm gonna swing by that bank and give them $10 instead of the 20 I gave them last week to buy those same 20 credits. Good news, we're gonna keep paying you the exact same amount of credits, so no need to burn down the government. Bad news, it's just worth half as much as it was yesterday. Now, some critical thinkers watching this episode might be scratching their heads and saying, I can't put my finger on why, but something feels weird about this. Why would a bank give the government 1,190 dinars for one American dollar one day, and then turn around and pay 1,450 dinar for that same one US dollar the next? That's an extra 260 dinar per dollar just because their Federal Reserve announced a price hike on dollars. Now you might guess that the answer is, in fact the answer lies in how Iraq handles their currency. While the United States government buys and sells currency based on their open market value, Iraq uses currency pegs. Now this means that they artificially overvalue their currency by buying it from banks at a loss. It would be like America trying to make quarters more valuable by allowing banks to turn in three quarters for a dollar. All of a sudden, four quarters might be worth more than a dollar because hey, three of them can get you that dollar. What the Iraqi government really just did was go from saying eight dimes gets you a dollar to nine dimes gets you a dollar. Banks will still take them up on that offer because they continue to profit off of these inflated exchanges. The government increases the value of each of their remaining dollars when they spend it domestically, and the only ones who suffer are anyone holding or getting paid in dinar, also known as any citizen in Iraq. They just saw their savings fall off the edge of a fiscal cliff, dropping 20% in the blink of an eye. The government just isn't propping up the dinar like they used to. Unfortunately, this reduction in currency support does not seem to be panning out because Iran's currency reserves are already drying up. The treasury is being forced to print money to pay for loans to the government that cover salaries and operational costs. Forget oil, soon they might be an ink based economy. The biggest obstacle to funding the government next quarter might end up being it keeps flashing toner low. Wait, you clicked print how many times? Well, I guess we can leave the oil game and pursue our true dream of painting. The final plan for Rock's cash crunch is to cut costs, specifically corruption, which is getting to be a very expensive line item in the Iraqi budget. It seems the one thing both Sunni and Shia leaders can agree on is we should be padding the government's payroll with more of our supporters. It's gotten to the point where federal employees earn 25% of Iraq's entire gross domestic product. The pitch here is less, we need institutional reform and more, hey corrupt leaders, now is not a great time for anyone. Can we just tap on the brakes a bit with these massively expensive schemes until the price of oil recovers? Maybe cut down our loyalist payment program to immediate family and spouses. Reformers are counting on the Iraqi leaders to recognize that this can no longer be sustained. Economic conditions might force the government's hand on this one considering that Iraq literally doesn't have enough cash to keep paying all of their employees. So that's Iraq's three pronged strategy for staying solvent until oil prices recover. Unfortunately, according to analysts, oil prices are not set to fully recover for quite some time. So fuel won't be fueling their economy anytime soon. Thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, I'd like to thank my patrons for helping me put out my videos. And if you want to support independent nonpartisan news looking into the overlooked, join this growing list of exceptional individuals by clicking on that link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring. Give me a thumbs up if you like what you saw, and lastly, as always, thank you for watching.